In this video, we're going to take a close look at the box sizing property in CSS. We'll cover what it means, the values it can take, and a major mistake you want to avoid. So make sure to watch all the way to the end. All right, so the box sizing controls the box model, or in simpler language, how the dimensions of the elements are calculated, taking into account the border, the padding, and the width of the element. There are two values that you can use, content box and border box. The default value for most elements is content box, and it was the standard until around 2009, 2010, when browsers started supporting border box, a new addition to CSS3 recommendation. So what are these values? What are the differences and why it's important to pick one? I think it will be much easier to understand with an example. So let's take a look at one. We'll first take a look at a very basic demo and then move on to a more realistic one. So in this code pen, which I will link in the description, I have a single paragraph and some base styles. And we can start by adding a max width to this paragraph. So let's do it here. And I'll use a round number, something like 48 rem, a round number in front end universe. I save it, open the same page in the browser inspect it and indeed if I look here it's 768 pixels. Now let's add a background and some padding to this paragraph and I'll use uh, let's say this one now we have the background and Adding, let's say 1.5 rem. Go to the browser, refresh the page, and something doesn't look right. If I hover over this element, it tells me that the width is 816 pixels. So what's going on here? This happens because we're using content box model, which means that when we're defining width of an element, we're sort of setting a width of the content. In our case, it would be the width of the text inside. And then paddings and borders, if defined, are added to that width, in turn increasing the dimensions of an element. So in our case, there will be 668 pixels plus 24 pixels plus 24 pixels, in turn making it 816 pixels. Now let's double check that and add a border to this paragraph, let's say two pixels. 2 pixels, solid, and let's do a funky color, blueberry filling. I click save and try to guess what the dimensions of this element would be. Let's refresh the page, inspect it, and it will be 820 pixels because we have 668 plus 24 plus 24 plus 2 plus 2. So basically width of an element plus paddings on each side plus borders on each side. So that adds up to 820 pixels, which is very counterintuitive, right? Especially when you're just starting to learn CSS. Like you define the width of an element to 768 and it turns out to be 820. Like, what the hell is that? So border box model reverses this logic. When you set the width of an element with border box model, it respects that width. And paddings and borders, if defined, do not increase the size of an element and instead they sort of shrink the content inside. So to illustrate what I mean, let's duplicate this paragraph add a class to it, I'll call it border box. And then here, let me create a class border box and set box sizing to border box. And just so they're not so close to each other, let me just remove this margin reset. So let's save it. And you can see that the second paragraph is actually smaller than the first one because it's actually 768 pixels. Let's inspect it to verify. Yeah, you can see that like if I hover over here, you can see the number in the tooltip next to the paragraph. And also, if we look at this box model representation, we can notice that the width of the content is actually smaller 
716 pixels. And that's because the borders and the paddings are subtracted from that width. So that's the basic difference between content box model and border box model. In summary, the content box model sets the width of the content and then paddings and borders, if set, increase the dimension of an element. Conversely, with the border box model, when we set the width of an element, paddings and borders are included with that width, effectively reducing the size of the content. So I hope that's clear. Let's move on to the next example. Here I have a more realistic demo, which I will also link in the description. The way I've set up this layout so far is by having an entry content div here and setting the max width of each element inside to 48 rem and also centering these elements using margin and line auto. This layout is almost finished. I only want to add padding inside the newsletter form and I want to make sure that inputs and the button take all the available space. So almost there and so far this layout hasn't given me any surprises. So let's start by adding the padding to the newsletter form. I can go in here Padding, maybe let's start with step two. And it's already starting to behave funky. Remember, I've set up the max width of each immediate child of entry content to 768 pixels. And I can see that the heading is 768 pixels and the paragraph is 768 pixels. But the newsletter form, for some reason, is not. It's wider. And that happens because we are using content box model. So we are setting the width of the content. And then we have paddings that add up to that. So in our case, that would be, I don't know, let me save this and go to, to the browser. Okay, 824, whatever. So if I wanted to fix that without touching the box model, I would need to create a calculation, something like this. Let's go back to the code pen and find the entry content declaration. Oh, it was here. So let me copy it. Also, let me copy the name of this block. So you don't see me typing too much. And then I would copy the max width here. And instead of just saying 48 rem, I would say calc. 48 rem minus step two, which is the value of the padding. Where was it? Right here. And then I also need to multiply that by two. That's what I want. But this doesn't look very scalable. Like what happens if the paddings within that newsletter form block change, right? I would need to update this and I would need to remember that I have this exception here. So this is not ideal. This code stinks. Okay, so let me comment it out, save, and I'll just leave it at that for now. So let's sort of like come down and continue building the layout and we will deal with that later. I also said that I want to make sure that the button and the inputs take all the available space. So let's start with the button. And my immediate thought is like, okay, I need the button to take all the available space. I'll just set with 100%, right? Okay, so I'll find the so I'll find the class that represents this button. In our case it's form control button. And I think I actually have it here and I will set it to with 100%. And this looks a little bit suspicious, but whatever. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? So we'll just keep going. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to do is make sure that the inputs are also the same width or take all the available space. So I'll just do the same, right? I'll copy this width. I know that my inputs have the class of form control input. So I'll find that class here, form control input, and then paste this rule here. And oh my God, like if this was the third day of me learning CSS, I would have probably like destroyed my laptop or threw it out the window because like, what the hell? I'm doing the exact same thing. Let me clean this up. I'm doing the exact same thing. I'm setting the width to 100% on the two elements that sit inside the same container with same, like, same everything. 
and they behave differently. But okay, let's come down and try to understand what's going on. So the inputs are actually behaving the way they should behave because we're still using content box model. And when we set the width of inputs to 100%, we are saying, make them as wide as the parent. But because we are using content box model, we're basically saying, make the content of the inputs as wide as the parent and add paddings and borders on top of that. So that's why they are extending outside of the container. So that's pretty normal. But what's going on with the button? That's what surprises me. So if I save this and inspect this uh, layout scrolling down, let me do it here, all the way to user agent styles, we'll see that the box sizing is set to border box by default on input type submit. As you can see, this is all very messy and counterintuitive. To avoid this madness, I recommend using border box model globally. I add this snippet to every single project that I start. So let's add it to this code pen as well. I'll just go here and add it right after the root declaration. So we'll select every single element, then we'll select every single element before pseudo selector, and then we'll do the same for the after pseudo selector. And then we'll set box sizing border box. And that fixes all the issues that we had with this layout. And that is exactly the mistake you should avoid, which is not setting the box sizing to border box globally at the very beginning of the project. Because imagine what happens if you don't do it. Let's say I'm not aware of box sizing and I start building my project using content box model. It kind of sucks, but I manage, right? I use calc for setting the widths and everything. And I create multiple components. They all get tested and released in the production. And then another engineer joins the project and asks me, Dima, why haven't you used border box model? It's so much better. And then I'm like, huh? And then I research it and be like, oh my God. Yeah, it makes so much more sense. But now I have all these components that I have built previously and I cannot just enable border box globally because I will need to retest every single component and remove those calculations. So basically I have three options moving forward. Continue using content box in this project, which is stupid because nobody uses it at this point without a good reason. I can also refactor everything, remove those calculations and continue using border box. But the problem here is that you need to test everything very carefully. Hopefully you have visual regression testing suite in place. But another problem is like smaller projects don't usually have that. And it means that you refactor everything, test and pray that nothing breaks. And the third option, which is probably the worst one, is I realize that I don't want to use content box moving forward, but the project is big enough and doesn't have the testing system in place. So instead of refactoring everything, I start declaring border box on every single component. And that just means that my CSS file grows for no particular reason. And then the next engineer joins the project and like wonders why is it built this way. So if you're starting a new project, make sure that setting box sizing border box is one of your first tasks or double check that the framework you're using does it for you. Or if you choose to use content box box model, make sure that you have a very good reason for that. I'll see you in the next one.